Rachel was our case study, verse 15. Then Laban said to Jacob, and it was a story of um, um, Laban and Jacob. Laban had two daughters, well, two daughters that was mentioned here, which was Leah and Rachel. And Rachel was far beautiful than Leah. And then when they wanted to get, when, when, when Jacob wanted to get married, they told Jacob that he should serve for seven years for Rachel. He loved Rachel. Rachel was beautiful. He's lovely to look on. She was a paragon and sinusaur of beauty. Uh, uh, excellent. There was no flaw in her. But when the Bible spoke about Leah, the Bible brought up, the Bible says she was tender-eyed. Another version says she was cross-eyed. She wasn't as beautiful as her sister. She wasn't the first thing a man would go for because me men are driven by sight. And we pray that our men be driven by intuition of the Holy Spirit. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't open up your eyes and uh, know who you are. Because you don't want to open up, wake up one morning and look along the bed and feel, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, but beauty is in the sight of the, of the beholder. And uh, behold, make sure that you behold. They said love is blind. I don't know where they got that from. Love is open eyes. Hallelujah. You open your eyes and you know who you're choosing and you find out who you're choosing and you look at her and then you also predict, you, you extrapolate that in the next 20 years, how would she look like? Because you don't want to wake up 20 years later. Amen? Same way, both ways. Vice versa. Because you can see a guy now and say, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. He has big hair, all kind of hair. Look at him. Wow. I might be able to run my fingers through him. Anyway, he has hair. Hallelujah. And then you now find out in the next 10 years, like myself. have a picture of me having hair before you see one you uh, you would have one yeah see had hair had a pattern cool kind of guy. and then if she had chosen me based on the hair who knows that the hair had disappeared so you most sometimes need to you need to also project and there are some various ways where you can project somehow you could have a vision you could project or you could check their parents Anyway, let me get back to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't find it again. Don't bother yourself. Hallelujah. So, 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 so this, this guy called Jacob now, now, now worked for seven years. But as I said, he didn't open his eyes. So on the day of the wedding, after they got drunk, he went into the temple, he went into the tent, woke up the following morning to say, oh, whoa, who are you? There are two kinds of woes that happens in the Bible. There was the one where Adam woke up one morning and said, Whoa, woman. And there's the other one that Jacob woke up. Ah, whoa, who are you? May you not wake up one day and say, oh, who are you? Where did you come from? I preached a sermon, a stranger in, in my bed. It's a long time. You know, we need to get back to this. So he woke up because the veil was on the face. And like Elder Brown said on, on Wednesday, if you have come to prayer, that you need some locks to go. Some of you, some people, you get into a relationship, the guy dumps you or the lady dumps you and then you enter depression. What depression? That's lot. Bye-bye. Fine. So somebody else. Is, anyway, hallelujah. We give you praise. Where, where am I? So, so he now wakes up and now finds out that, oh, I, I, I've slept with the wrong woman. Goes to the father-in-law and says, father-in-law, why did you give me the wrong woman? Say another thing. He didn't do his homework very well. I said it last week. Do your homework very well. Do your homework very well. In that land, you cannot marry the, you, it, you cannot marry the, the, the sister, the senior sister. No, you cannot marry the junior sister before the senior sister. Come on, ushers, move, move quick. Hallelujah. And bless that child. Help that child. And bring the child back in when the child has calmed down. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Yes, when the child comes down, bring the child back in. We love the child. We love children who are not yet able to go to Sunday school in the service. And then she now, 
He didn't do his homework very well. Didn't find out that in our land, you cannot marry the junior before the senior. That's why I said, do your homework very well. Do your research very well. Get the tape last week. Do your research. Anyway, he didn't do the research. And then what happened is that he had to now work another seven years, 14 years, 14 years. He wanted to marry one woman. But because he didn't do his research, he didn't open up his eyes. He was drunk. He had now had to pay a price. 14 years, and he's now ended up with two women, two sisters. Two different women are okay. Okay, in, in a sense, no, no, that, that's the that But two sisters to one man. You married two sisters. You also are looking for trouble anyway. And so now he has to cope with two sisters, except that Rachel was the one he loved the most. And now we have a bit of a problem because as he married Rachel and Leah, Le um, Leah felt hated. She felt unloved. And during the process of being unloved and hated, God saw it. So he stopped up the womb of Rachel and Leah began to produce children. Produce children one, produce children two, produce a child three. Still, Rachel was unhappy. Rachel got so bad that she, he looked, she went to um, um, Jacob and said, give me a child or I died. The Bible, or I die. The Bible says, and Jacob got very angry. That, am I God? Am I God who gives children? So there was a discontentment. She was loved, but she wasn't happy. Nothing that was done for her pleased her. She had a selfish nature. Also, I mean, I'm going forward because of, because of time. When she did have a child, and this is very, 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 very well, when, when she couldn't have a child, she now took her servant and gave it to Jacob, wife number three. So in the process of discontentment, you can make the person who's supposed to serve you become your equal. Bilal was given to her as a servant. Now Bilal is now equal with her as a wife. Bilal gives birth to a child and they call the child Naphtali, she, she, she names the child Naphtali and says that I have wrestled with my sister and prevailed. Discontentment went on and on. I can't go through the whole thing, but, but here, here, here's where, where I'm going. And, and, and not only that, she, uh, um, and the, 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 the servant gave birth to another child and named the child, uh, um, um, let me go through this. No, no, that's where I, I wonder where I wanted to go. The sister gave birth to a child called Reuben. She had given birth to children. Gave birth to a Reuben. Reuben, a small four-year-old boy, went into the to the to 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 the farm, brought found some mandrakes, which is normally known as love. And Rachel, who was discontented, who was envious and jealous, saw the small boy bringing those things and wanted to get it from her, from him. So Leah said, if you want it. Tonight, that means that our husband would not sleep in your tent. Of course, the husband has always been sleeping in the tent. So when the husband was coming back from the farm, tired man, as he was about to branch into Rachel's tent, Leah shouted, hey, man, Wah. move. You are here tonight. This guy said, what? I've bought you. I hired you by your jealous, envious wife who is never satisfied. So she, she now missed out from her husband. Now, at that point in time, Leah had given up giving birth. But because of envy and take, stolen the four-year-old boy's mandrakes, Leah said, hey, you are here. So he now went into the tent by fire. Slept with Leah, who hasn't slept with for a very long time. Leah produces another child. And out of the children Leah had, Reuben, Levi, Judah, some, some heavyweights, heavyweights in the political scene. Because there was politics going on, but they, they, he, was, he was producing kings. She was producing priests, armies. Because somebody was discontent. She also stole the goods of her, the gods of her father. Now let me just move forward, you can get the tape. I just wanted to, 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 to give you 
uh, uh, um, and, and I said, some couples today get angry for, with God for not giving them children, while others who do have children look forward to the day when the kids will be grown and gone so that they can have some peace and quiet. Sometimes when you're hearing shouting in the house, don't get annoyed. Praise God. Because some homes don't have anybody shouting. I'll kill you. In fact, I can't wait for you to leave. You'll be shocked that the smile that is coming to your face between you and your husband was because the children are home. Just thank God for where you are. Because when you didn't have you were moody, moaning. Now you have them. You can't wait to get rid of them. Homemakers want to be working wives. Working wives want to be full-time homemakers. There are Christians who are dissatisfied with the places where they live, the jobs they have, the money they make, the houses they live in. Have you seen Christians? They make a lot of money, yet they are, they are not happy because of a spirit of discontentment. And then you see somebody who makes little money and with that little money does great things. Because one way or the other, according to Philippians, they have learned the secret of contentment in every and any situation. Amen? But can you remember, many marriages break down because before, maybe they entered. I, I know people who, there was, there was a particular, we were heard of a particular case of a, a, a couple who was about to get married. They went into the pastor's office. The lady comes from a very rich background. The guy comes from a poor background. And, and, and they said they were all fine. They were ready to marry everything. The pastor said, are you sure that this everything is he said, fine? He said, okay, let's talk about finances. He said, what do we need to, the guy said, what do we need to talk about finances for? He said, no, we just need to talk about finances. He said, look, um, 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 how, how are you going to make money? How are you going to make her happy? Because you know, she comes from a rich background. The guy said, no, that we love each other for better and for worse. The lady looked at her and said, what? excuse me, I don't understand. The guy said, yeah, for better, for worse, I mean, I mean, I'm living in a one bedroom at the moment and she loves me, she will come to the lady said, what? No, we didn't talk about that one. Anyway, to cut a long story short, by the time they left, they were separated because everybody had different ideas as the perspective of what money is. Have we not seen couples who started off together, uh, money came, they were flying the world, doing all kinds of sorts, and then business, you know business, business. You have the ups and downs, the stock market, ups and downs. If you are doing investing, ups and downs. And then there comes a down, and then they come to them and say, oh, where are we going on holiday this year? The children, how about, you know, we can't afford it. You can't afford, what do you mean you can't afford? We can't afford, what do you mean you can't afford it? And for the next three weeks or four weeks, there's silence in the house. There's fighting, there's argument. Just because they could not adapt. It's a spirit of discontentment. The Bible says, I have learned the secret of contentment in every and any situation. Stop putting stress on yourself. In the good times, the Bible says, rejoice. In the bad days, consider, for God maketh one as the other. Somebody shout, amen. amen. That I'm still alive and you still came back to this week. It means I'm saying something that you need to hear by the spirit of God. You need to learn, be, be open. Many people are discontent. You married her. You married him. Fact, let me read. Let me finish reading this before I forget. Yeah. So, so, some, are, so, some are discontented with their husband. They whine and scold because the man don't pay enough te- attention to them. They don't spend enough time with the children. Won't do little jobs around the house. They stay out too late or think more of their jobs, their cars, their hobbies, their television, their sports than they think of themselves. Some husbands are discontented with their wives. They criticize them for the way they dress, the way they fix their hair, the way they cook, the way they keep the house, the way they treat the children. They get upset because they sleep too late, eat too much, waste too much time, spend too much money. No matter how hard some wives try, they can never please their husbands. And I put a balance. I said some of these things are important and need to be talked about. There's a sermon that I have always wanted to preach. I don't know when I will get to it. And that is dealing with finances in the marriage. One way or the other, every principality that has been preventing me from preaching that sermon, I say bye-bye to you in Jesus' name. I am going to, because it is scary. And you see, people, the devil prevents you from coming together to plan the finances so that poverty can hit you in the future. 
So it's there is not that it's, I'm not I'm not saying you should totally ignore them or suffer in silence, but a spirit of discontent that causes us to force nag bicker quarrel. There's some things you've been nagging, you nagged on it when you got since when you got married. Ten years and then you're still nagging. Don't you think somehow, somewhere? As I normally say, he's a fool that only does the thing over and over again and expects a different result. There's some things that you know what you just I what was that song you just said? I give you all. I give you. That's why you need to fast. He, he's not going to change in that area except nagging hasn't changed, shouting hasn't changed, father in law hasn't changed, father outlaw hasn't changed him, mother in law hasn't changed, mother outlaw hasn't changed. You just leave the guy alone and let the Holy Spirit change the guy. Same thing, vice versa. Maybe God is waiting to prove to you that I am the owner of all flesh. Amen? Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that, 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 that you shouldn't rise up to your responsibility. There are responsibilities. Amen? A man must be the priest, the king, and the prophet in the house. A man must bring in the bacon. I don't know what has happened nowadays. The goalpost seems to have been shifted. I am sticking with the goalpost of the scripture. You men wake up early in the morning. Go and get a job. Find, provide for the house. Let the woman ask you, we need money. And you say, God will provide and I would walk. I will provide. It's not giving birth to children, letting them run around. Get up, man. Wake up. Do something. Bring in the money. That's your responsibility. You are a king. You go to battle. You come. Nowadays, they send the woman to battle. You just go to battle and you sit at home doing nothing. No, no. My friends, wake up. Get up. Move out. Do something. You have wisdom. You have knowledge. You have qualifications. Is this my sermon? No. You have wisdom, qualifications, knowledge, understanding. What are you doing sitting on your back? He, he, she wakes up, she goes to work, and then you now expect her to give you, you, you money. She's a help meet, there to help you. You bring in something, it's not enough, she substitutes. Why are you all quiet? Somebody say amen somewhere. Amen. Or say good preaching, pastor. What are you talking about? I'm just getting sick and tired of men giving me all kinds of us. I don't even know what to say. Hallelujah. There's no goalpost. Nothing has changed. The scripture hasn't changed. The man is the man of the house. You have a patriarchal anointing. Abraham did not wait for his wife to bring in the salary. Jacob did not wait for his wife to bring in the salary. Isaac did not wait for his wife to bring in the salary. And God is not waiting for you to bring in the salary. God provides. I am the provider. A man is a provider. You are a protector. You're supposed to protect. You're supposed to provide. You're supposed to be in charge. You're supposed to be above. You're supposed to hear from God. Bring it into the house. Take from the house as a priest. Take it to God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Paul said, if a man does not provide for his household, especially those of it, he, he, he has denied the faith. You have denied the faith. You can speak in tongues. You can prophesy. You are a denier of the faith. And you are worse than an infidel. Paul said, a man who does not work should not eat. Let me bring a balance. Hello? Hmm. How did I get here? Let me bring a balance. Let me bring a balance. <sighs> no, I hear some, some daggers coming, so don't worry. <sighs> me in your hands. Where's Balaji? Just, just help me. No? Bible says that when they played, that the devil went. So just, hallelujah. Now let me bring your balance. There are certain situations and circumstances that can prevent a man providing. Watch this. Sickness. So understandable. Do you understand? 
in between jobs. But the question is, what did I say? In between. Hello. Amen. If they are establishing a business, but don't start a business that all the household is in trouble. Amen. So there are circumstances and situations. But I will understand. For a short while. And I see, I've seen men, whilst they're even trying to do something, they go out and they, they still become a cab driver. They must bring in something. I'm talking to the men today. But you women know that there's no escape. You know, I'm coming to your background. You know, you know. I always mean that. But somehow, the men came to me. Because... We will watch that if I ever get to that sermon. We will watch that no matter what Rachel did. Rachel stole the gods of her father. Rachel did not, did not link to the God of Jacob. When they were living, the idols of her father. Now, whoever owns the idols owns the headship of the home. Rachel was so discontent. Not only did she want a husband, she also wanted the house of her father. She stole the gods. When she gave birth to a child, eventually, called the child Joseph, named the child as I have won against my sister, but, but I need another one. Stress the guy for another one. Got another one. Just as she was about to die in childbirth. And she was the only woman. And the first woman, the only woman that I know. In the whole of the scripture that I know. Correct me. Biblicists and scriptural gurus and pontificates of the scripture. Correct me later. But she's the only woman I know in the Bible that died of childbirth. Because the covenant of God doesn't say we should die during childbirth. She's the only one. And when she was even dying, still, she named the child Benjamin. Son of Benan, son of Saul. And the father said, you, you started again. The father now named the child Benjamin. Son of my old age, isn't it? She was never satisfied. He, a lack of discontentment caused her to be buried by the wayside. So how did I get to men? But irrespective, apart from the one case of Jacob ever getting annoyed with her, Jacob still loved Rachel. Let me prove it to you. In fact, there are indications that his devotion to her were to the very end of her life. For example, irrespective of her, for example, when Jacob was going to meet Esau, he feared that Esau, that I did evil to, would come and kill me. When he heard of the army Esau was bringing, what did he do? He put the first two servants' children first. Uh -huh. Go ahead. That we're come, nothing will happen to you, but you just go ahead. Then put Leah and her children. And then came behind with us himself and Rachel. Still, irrespective of how discontent, angry, selfish that woman was, the husband still loved her to the end. Can you be angry and your husband and your wife can say, I know he still loves me? You know, I'm, being, I'm coming in a balance. So, ladies, shout amen now. Men, don't worry, I'll have your back later. You know, an unequal balance is an abomination unto the Lord. But today, no. Come, 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 come. He, was, he, he came in the red, still with Rachel. Irrespective of what Rachel did, there was never an indication. If I watch this, the Bible says that the Bible says that Jacob was far from perfect. 
Jacob was father. But he is an example of us of how a husband ought to treat his wife when she isn't all that she ought to be. Some husband says, I could love her more if she would only be sweet. Love that functions only when she's sweet is not really love. God wants wives to sense their husband's intense love for them even when they are acting like stinkers. In fact, let me read that again. Hot! And most of us have moments like that. Maybe men should ask themselves this question periodically, especially in the middle of a disagreement. Is my wife, ask this question, is my wife conscious of my love right now? Is she feeling love or is she feeling anger, hostility and rejection? God made a wife with a need to rest secure in her husband's love at all times. I forgot her birthday. We don't celebrate Valentine in our house. Silly. What's wrong with you? You're poor. Get rich. Never taking her to the movie. Even if you don't have money for the movie, the internet is there, connected to the TV. <laughs> My TV is off. Buy some popcorn. Order some expensive Chinese. Set the place, lazy. I said, today, we're just all by ourselves. And I promise you, next time, I will take you to an hotel. Say, yeah, we don't do that in our house. What do you do? <laughs> because love is action. No, tell, 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 me what, tell, tell me what you do. Say, so we don't, yeah, praise, yeah, yeah. Even the praise and worship, you don't know the songs. She's the one leading the praise and worship. No, 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 what do you do? You've never taken her to a theater. All you do is that. Ah, you just wake up and say, Hop, Goro Shoko, Eke, and The Holy Ghost is saying we should fast. Why is he fasting all the time? Why, why, why does the Holy Ghost tell you to take her to Spain for three days? Why is he always fasting? Praying. Why? Spiritual development. They are more spiritual than you. They're just watching. The guy, the guy, the guy, the love is action, feeling. Do you touch her and not touch her because your brain has gone somewhere else? Do you love her? How do you treat her outside? Do you surprise her? You've never surprised her. They can predict you. The best you will come in is flowers that you bought in Tesco. You are very predictable. What is that? Have you delivered? Flowers before, oh, they don't like flowers. What do they like? Find out. Amen? Amen. Has my time gone? Find out. What are you doing? You don't walk. You don't do anything. Jacob was always there, protecting, resting, making sure that the whole house, how can Jacob have four wives? And still provide for the whole family. They never complained about food, money. All they were complaining, they were just competing for husband. Can your wife compete for you? <laughs> you know, I used to say that. Let me. So, you know, I used to say, I'm getting wise, wiser. I used to say that, oh, oh, oh you, uh, women, if you don't uh, uh, hold your husband and you don't satisfy him, he will go down the road and, and, and go to Julie. Many women will say, you say, you go. <laughs> That Julie, you can have her. Have him. 
Our model is Christ. Ephesians 5 gave us a, gave us a blueprint. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. But we stop there. How does Christ love the church? That's not the question. The question is, how does the church react to Christ? We're disobedient. We don't listen. We are rioters. We do all okay, kinds of things. And Christ still loves the church. We, we do false doctrine. We do anything. We disgrace God. But Christ still loves us. So you don't know what my wife is. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loves the church. Whatever the wife is doing is what the church is doing. And the husband loves the wife irrespective. Wives don't say amen, please. Because he said, he didn't even stop there. He said, and gave himself. Gave himself. Gave Christ. Gave himself. Sacrificed himself. Laid down his life. Men ought to lay down your life. And I know you men are saying, but pastor, 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 this is not equal. Let me sort you out first. Let's obey God first. Let's do what God says first. And then see God show up. Laid his life. For the church. Sorry, I've gone over time, but I have to. When Rachel died, she was buried by the wayside. Today, you can still visit the tomb, the monument of a disaster of discontentment. But Jacob never got over Rachel. When he was at 147 years, he called all his sons together in Egypt and blessed them. And he was still thinking about her. He said, in, in, in Genesis 48, 7. Now as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died to my sorrow in the land of Canaan on the journey when there was some distance to go to Ephrath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath. That is Bethlehem. He loved her to the end of life. Amen? Irrespective of who she was. But let me conclude with this. And... Men, I will have your back next week or somehow. But today is the ladies' day. But what good did this do to her? This is where I come in for the ladies. A spirit of discontent never allowed Rachel to enjoy the love of her husband. She kept, it kept her from enjoying anything. She had a husband she didn't enjoy. She wanted a child. She had the child she didn't enjoy. She wanted another child. She was always wrestling with her sister, wrestling with, with everybody all around. She never enjoyed anything. They had money. She never enjoyed it. There was still something else. She was isolated in her grief and loneliness. Then she died, leaving Jacob to the sister she envied so much. And even in death, now this is the sad part, even in death, she was alone. At Jacob, at Jacob's request, Leah died before Jacob. At Jacob's request, he told his sons, bury me beside my wife Leah. That's a sad thing. Genesis 49, 29 to 31, 50. It says, bury me. They buried him next to Leah in the cave, watch this, in the cave of Machpelah in Hebron besides Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Rebekah. So Abraham and Sarah buried. Isaac, Rebekah buried. And now Jacob and Leah. Rachel lies alone. 
on the way to Canaan. Philippians 4.13 in conclusion. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. The New Living Translation says I can do everything with the help of Christ who gives me the strength I need. Discontentment needs the strength of God. I can do. If you don't have, how can I be content? It's Jesus. Jesus is the only one that you can find total satisfaction in. If you put your, if you are willing to look for somebody to get contentment, you are lying. Find your contentment in Christ and you will find your contentment in anything. Whether Paul said, I have learned the secret of, he says, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to be in plenty, the new IV. I have learned the secret of contentment in every and any situation. It is discontentment that causes a man to go down the road and look at another woman and sleep with another woman. It's discontentment that causes a woman to go down the road to sleep with another man. There are other things involved, but the secret really is discontentment. It is our responsibility as men and women to mirror up to Christ, ask Christ to come into our life and give us contentment. Your husband cannot give you contentment. Your wife cannot give you contentment. Your boyfriend cannot give you contentment. Your girlfriend cannot give you contentment. Food cannot give you contentment. A job cannot give you contentment. Money cannot give you contentment. Money actually cannot give Many people say, if I win a million pounds now, I will be the happiest person. If you win a million pounds, you wouldn't sleep for four days. I guarantee you, I get, for four days you wouldn't sleep. Then now you now have the process. Then you now have a series of process. Um, maybe I should not say anything because my, 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 my family back in Ghana, eh, uh, or Jamaica, or, in, or Syria alone is coming. So maybe I should keep quiet. Actually, my neighbor now is going, maybe I shouldn't say anything. So you now go through that stress again. Then you have a problem, what do I spend it on? So many people, because you, you, do, you don't have a plan. Jesus is the only one that can make you content. And you need to pray, Jesus, make me content. Even though I gave these examples and roles of the men, let me tell you something. The men can do all these roles and you can still be unsatisfied. You find a good man who works hard who takes care of the children, who takes them to school, who takes them to their, to, who, who tries to attend as many uh, um, school stuff that they need to attend, who wakes up in the night, who knows how to change their diapers, who feeds them, who cooks for you once a while, who does everything, still you have something to moan about. Or you forgot to take out the garbage. Or your socks is lying in a corner. If you don't have Christ, no matter what a person does for you, you are still not content. So before you start going home and telling that uh, husband, did you hear what they said? Sort yourself out first. Because they can do anything. They can remember your bad day. They can buy you any shoes, bag, hair, dress, nails, clothes. Everything. You could, put, you could point to a house and they buy it. But you are never content. It's the next house. Oh, I went to Julie's house and I saw a decoration in their house. Because you are discontent. You need Jesus. Father, help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Let's bow our heads and pray. Jesus is the answer to your discontent.
ask Jesus to come into your life. Either you're born again or not. I just want you to say Jesus. The prayer point last week, Sunday, was that I will be filled with the fullness of God. Because when you are filled with the fullness of God, you stop looking at people's imperfections. You're so covered that you can't even see the good in front of you. You need Jesus. That Jesus, let me be filled with your love and your fullness in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your chest, everybody. Just, let's put our hand, just put your hand on your chest. Because the Bible says that that it is the heart that the issues of life flows out. Let's lay our hands on our heart. Everybody. And say, and just pray that Jesus take control of my heart. Fill my heart with your love and your fullness of satisfaction. Serious, pray that prayer. You'll be shocked. You'll see a transformation happening in your life. You'll just find out that all are things that will no more bother you because Christ is dwelling fully. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus our hearts transformed in Christ. We give you all glory and praise. Jesus.